Um, Justin Tomlinson to move the motion. Thank you, Sir David. And uh, may I first uh, start off by saying what a pleasure it is to serve under your chairmanship. And uh, this is a subject I'm very passionate about. I've spoken in a number of debates since I first became an MP on the power of sport to influence good behaviour, create opportunities and to provide enjoyment. And I must stress that the principle of this debate is not on whether we are right or wrong to have a sugar tax, but to focus on how we should be spending that levy now that decision has been taken. And with a £500 million pot, it is a significant amount of money that can make a genuine difference. I must also thank all the different organisations that contacted me uh, in recent days ahead of this debate, which included the Sports and Recreation Alliance, who understandably are very keen to see sporting opportunities increase, Sustrans, who want to see more funding for walking and cycling programmes to and from school, Youth Sport uh, Trust, who, like the Sports and Recreation Alliance, are focused on the sports element, and also the link between greater physical activity and greater academic performance, something I know the schools minister would welcome. UK Active, who've done a huge amount of research particularly highlighting the cliff edge fall in activity during school holidays, which I'll come back to. And also health, health organisations like Diabetes UK, who are obviously in favour of reducing the amount of sugar being used. Cancer Research UK, same principle. And the Royal College of Surgeons, uh, on behalf of the, the dental surgeons, to obviously reduce tooth decay. Now, for me, this is a very important subject because... One third of children are obese or overweight by the time they leave primary school. To me, that was a staggering statistic to read. When I was growing up, it seemed that all of us were active and charging around. And I was staggered that one third, one in three. And not only is that an alarming figure, but you start to create social norms where if an increasing number of children are overweight or obese, it becomes acceptable and therefore it starts to increase. On a topical uh, level, we currently, through the NHS, spend £6 billion per year helping people with illnesses linked to either being overweight or being obese. How we could better spend that money if there were fewer obese people? And if you are an obese child, you are five times more likely to be an obese adult than if you were not obese as a child. And the Youth Sport Trust highlight that only 21% of boys and 16% of girls meet the recommended guidelines for physical activity. Now, I recognise we are competing with video games, with shrinking gardens. Gardens, back gardens are one-third smaller than they were in the 1960s. And uh, cautious parents. When I was growing up, parents didn't think anything of you disappearing miles on end on long bike rides, playing in distant parts, going to your friends' houses far afield. Whereas nowadays, understandably, parents are worried if their children are out of sight. And again, that limits the opportunity to be active. And the government recognises that we have to do something. In August 2016, they published the Childhood Obesity, a plan for action, with the aim to significantly reduce the rate of childhood obesity. And this in plan uh, included the soft drinks levy, worth £520 million a year, clearer food labelling, and that's something I pushed for in the last Parliament through my work with the British Heart Foundation, because we do have a duty to allow consumers to make an informed decision. So another fact that surprised me, and I say this as somebody who does enjoy drinking uh, sugar-laced fizzy drinks, but I wish to be informed. I was surprised to, to read that a five-year-old should take 19 grams of sugar a day, yet one can of Coke is 35 grams of Coke. Now, how many consumers actually know that? And if they did know that, would they then change their habits? And crucially, this was announced uh, as part of a nudge policy, where we gave the industry two years to make changes. And I recognise that many of the leading manufacturers and retailers are already making changes. But as I said, I'm not focusing on whether it was right or wrong to do the levy. But clearly... <coughs> Part of the strategy is to influence behaviour. But as we've recognised that uh, physical activity is good for health, good for improving academic performance, I did welcome that this money would be ring-fenced to spend in activities connected to schools. If we are going to have a tax, if we are going to get extra money, let's make sure that money is spent in the right way. And the best way to do that for children is through the schools. And as it stands... Yes. This 
thank the Honourable Gentleman for giving way and I congratulate him on bringing this important subject to this chamber. Um, I wonder if he'd like to comment, um, given his enthusiasm for sporting schools, which I share, about the coalition government's decision to scrap the school's sports partnership in 2010, which has had a really detrimental effect on sport in our schools. And I don't see the sugar tax as actually going all the way to replacing the excellent sports, uh, school sports partnership scheme that we had. I, I thank the Honourable Member. Actually, it was the very first time I rebelled. I was rewarded uh, to then sit on some obscure European committees thing for five years to remember, uh, the, to think carefully about your actions. And actually, the funding wasn't then scrapped. There was a change. in point. There was a proposal initially to remove the ring fencing. Uh, the money was then once again ring fenced, though it allowed schools to choose how to spend it on sports related. And actually, I supported that because we've got some fantastic school sports partnerships, and those ones are still thriving today, including my own local one. But there are also some pretty poor ones. Those ones have now gone by the wayside, and those schools have now spent that money on individual sports coaches, sports clubs, and things like that. So actually, we got there in the end, and funding has increased in this area since 2010. So as it's... Yes. It's the issue of sport. Uh, issue of sport. Nobody is against um, some of the sugar tax being used um, for encouraging greater sporting activities. But does he not accept in his constituency and mine and everybody else's large numbers of children during the school holidays who would have free school dinners during the term time do not get any food uh, from the school or from free school dinners? And might not one of the ways of making the sugar tax uh, progressive would be to um, uh, earmark part of the revenue to ensure that schools could at least lay on the facilities for voluntary bodies to provide sc uh, school dinners during the holidays? I think I remember, and that's a very powerful point. Uh, I, I would agree with the sentiment of that. I wouldn't necessarily use the sugar tax money, but I think it's something that the government could consider as a wider point. I think it's a, a very fair point, and actually some of the heads in some of the more deprived parts of my constituency have raised similar concerns about what happens to the children, uh, not just in terms of eating, but on wider issues throughout those holidays. So, as it stands, £285 million to extend the school day in secondary schools in relation to sport, £160 million to double the primary school PE budget, and £10 million to expand breakfast clubs. And this was welcomed by Emma Boggis, the Chief Executive of the Sports and Recreation Alliance, who said it will deliver more opportunities to get children of a young age active and to stay active in later life. And it is that point that is very, very important because we must recognise that what opportunities we create must be regular, they must be sustainable, because we also recognise that actually if the government's intention of the sugar tax uh, works out and all of the manufacturers uh, reformulate their products, customers switch uh, from the full uh, sugar version to the zero version, then actually the amount of money will diminish. Therefore, we have to make sure that this money is spent to seed regular, sustainable activities. Um, and this is where I then bring forward my rather reasonable, in my unbiased opinion, asks. And um, this has all come about from a visit in my constituency to Oakhurst Primary School, which hosts the Draycott Sports Camp run by Mark Draycott, a PE teacher uh, at that school. And they run after-school clubs, weekend clubs, and school holiday clubs. Now, there are lots and lots of sports camps. I'm sure all of us as MPs have been to visit them at some point. But this one set itself apart by a country mile. Over 200 primary school children were being active each and every single day in the last summer holidays, of which slightly more were girls than boys, so that's something for Sport England and the Sports Minister to recognise and celebrate, because that's a particular area of challenge. They were engaging in all sorts of different sports. So a summary of how this would work is it runs every school holiday, um, and it runs from 9am till 6 o'clock, and it's £12.50 a day. Now that is probably the cheapest childcare that a parent will find. It creates an, an active environment which could be inclusive and engaging for all abilities. And that's vital because if you are particularly sports-minded as a child, it's probably because you've got sports-minded parents, you already signed up for your football, rugby, netball club already. This is for the vast majority of children who are not necessarily sports-minded, who are the ones most likely to become obese. 
It focuses on helping children to be more active and it introduces new sports to children, not just football and netball, but cricket, athletics, golf, lacrosse, replicating what is inspiring children on the television. It was amazing. I went during uh, the Olympics and saw as they were recreating the things that were inspiring them on the, t the, the TV. And because Mark Dracott is a teacher and the majority of his support staff have connections to the school or are teachers themselves, they have the expertise to identify and support those children who are starting to fall by the wayside, who are not naturally gifted, not naturally sports enthusiastic, to make sure they remain engaged. So they concentrate on killing the fear factor some children have when playing sports and ensuring they're enjoying the activity. And they are increasing participation both in girls and bucking those national trends. Now, what, why I wanted to highlight that is because we have an opportunity to replicate, as he said when he was interviewed on BBC Points West this morning, that we shouldn't just have this here in Oakhurst in Swindon. We should have this all over the country. There should be hundreds and hundreds of these camps. They are sustainable. The taxpayer is not paying him to do this. He is running this as his own organisation. But the government can help. Because first of all, anybody who wishes to set up one of these camps will need to build up numbers. And therefore, we could look to incentivise other people to do the same sort of thing and charge them less to hire the school facilities at the beginning. Until they build up the numbers, they become sustainable in their own right, they will keep going. We also need to attract more good quality PE teachers to the profession. We had a chronic shortage of PE teachers. We are beginning to get more coming in now. But the beauty is he came from a sporting background. He was a non-league sports player. And we tried in the last government to attract tro troops to become teachers, and it turned out there weren't millions of troops who wished to become teachers. But there are so many non-league sports stars who are minded, who with the right incentives, with the right instructions, could go on to be very, very good PE teachers in the schools. And I would urge the schools minister looks as this is a potential wealth of talent that if we advertise to, we could potentially recruit some very, very good people. But, uh, so we get... Lots of Draycott sports camps all over the country, and that is fantastic for those that wish to pay and can afford to do so. And as I've seen, the 200 uh, children every single day, and that's something that we can replicate. But I wish to go even further than that, because I would also like to see all school facilities made available for free between the hours of 4 and 6 o'clock to any organisation that is doing it as a voluntary activity. So if some parents get together and say, we wish to put on netball club, football club, basketball club, I don't mind, as long as it's, an act, it's a constructive activity for young people. Between the hours of four and six o'clock, we shouldn't also be charging for them. So some of the sugar tax money can then be used to compensate the loss of income to schools. Now, these are not particularly high peak times for school hire fees because generally school sporting facilities are well used when the offices and factories shut at six o'clock and that's when uh, you would, they would expect to make their income. So I would suspect this would be just a modest part but this would remove the barrier that many enthusiastic parents find. And I know this because I spent 10 years as a borough councillor in Swindon representing a new build area where I had PFI schools. So we had limited leisure facilities, yet we had fantastic sporting facilities that the taxpayer was paying for, yet we could not afford to access them at a time when they were simply not being used. That does not make sense. If we can find people willing to give up their time, and in all of our constituencies we've got hundreds and hundreds of sports clubs who would seize this opportunity to provide these constructive opportunities that will make our children active, that will remain in place once the money starts to diminish, and will crucially help those busy, busy parents. Yes. Thank the Honourable Member for giving way. Um, would he recognise that there are many, many teachers across the UK who are already running voluntary after-school clubs and taking their own time to offer the sorts of activities that he's talking about? Yeah, and I, I, and I pay absolute tribute to teachers, to parents, to local community people who are prepared to give up their own time to provide constructive activities for young people. And what I'm wanting is to be able to get the government to encourage the entrepreneurial spirit that Mark Draycott showed so that they can set up their own holiday camps so you have those regular, uh, good, exciting opportunities for young people. And in conclusion, um, 
I would urge the government to seize this opportunity. It's not often that a department is given a significant increase in funding to spend. It's normally, and I know when I spent my time as a minister, you're looking, how on earth can we find money to do all the sort of worthy things that we would like to do? But this is an opportunity to benefit children both becoming more active and therefore less obese, to improve their academic achievement because there is a direct link between those who are active and their ability uh, to progress academically. And it will be a welcome blessing for hard-working, busy parents whose often biggest challenge is what to do with children after school, during the long school holidays, and at weekends. And this offers that opportunity to deliver those long-term sustainable solutions. I want every child to have as much fun as those children who go to the Draycott Sports Camp, and this is the time that we can make a reality. I'll start by congratulating my honourable friend uh, for North Swindon on securing this important debate. Childhood obesity is a national problem. Data from uh, Public Health England's National Child Measurement Programme shows that in England, a third of children are obese or overweight by the time they leave primary school. And as my honourable friend so ably said, that does run the danger of creating new social norms, that obesity will become the new normal. Uh, sugar consumption is a major factor in childhood obesity and sugar-sweetened soft drinks are now uh, one of the biggest sources of dietary sugar for children and teenagers. A single 330 milliliter can of cola can contain nine teaspoons of sugar, which is more than a child's daily recommended intake of added sugar, often without any other intrinsic nutritional value. And the introduction of the soft drinks industry levy is a clear indication of this government's commitment to addressing this vital issue. Now, reducing sugar consumption alone, though, is not enough. It is also important that all children have the opportunity to engage in sport and physical activity. And so this debate is timely, uh, as it allows me to set to, to the opportunity to set out our plan to further improve physical education and school sport using revenue generated from the levy. And the government understands that high quality PE is a route into instilling a life with health, well-being, and exercise at its core. It's why PE is compulsory at all four key stages in the national curriculum. It's also why, through the primary PE and sport premium, we've invested over £600 million of ring-fenced funding to primary schools to improve uh, physical education and sport since 2013. And we know this funding is making a big difference. Independent research from Natsen has found that since the introduction of the primary PE and sport premium, 87% of primary schools have reported that the quality of PE uh, has increased and the vast majority of schools have introduced new sports and extracurricular activity. And I join the Honourable Gentleman, the member for Withenshaw and Sale, in pay paying tribute to those teachers who do go the extra mile, uh, almost literally, uh, in providing those extra sporting activities. It also shows that 84% of primary schools reported an increase in pupil engagement in PE uh, during curricular time and in the levels of participation in extracurricular activities, and there has been a 50% increase in the number of qualified specialist PE teachers in primary schools to almost half of all schools. Now, my honourable friend, uh, the member for North Swindon, will no doubt already be aware that in Wiltshire, its primary schools received around £1.8 million of additional funding uh, in 2016-17, and in Swindon, uh, primary schools have received an additional £611,400 in 2016-17. Uh, 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 but we know that there's more to do, and the soft drinks industry levy will be used to double the primary P and sports premium to £320 million a year from September 2017. And this funding will continue to be ring-fenced to assist schools in developing PE uh, extracurricular sport activities and to make long-term improvements that will benefit pupils joining the schools in future years. And I can give my honourable friend, the member for Colchester, assurance that this funding is committed to 2020 and will help drive up the quality and breadth of PE and sport provision. Now, this increased funding will allow schools to build on the progress made through the existing premium. It will enable them to hire sports uh, qualified sports uh, coaches, qualified sports coaches, to work with teachers, uh, provide existing staff with training uh, or resources, and introduce new sports and activities that encourage uh, more pupils to be healthy and active. Now, my honourable friend from North Swindon told us about the PE teacher, Mark Draycott, and his excellent initiative 
the Draycott Sports Camp. And this was established in 2013, and it operates out of Oakhurst Primary School, where Mr. Draycott also is a teacher. And the idea behind the camp was to create more opportunities for primary-aged children of all abilities to participate in school and sport and physical activity during the school holidays. And the programme offers extracurricular clubs uh, after school and during those school holidays. Now, I'd like to commend my honourable friend for championing their great work and for taking time to visit their camp last year. Uh, well, I've been reliably informed he equipped himself credibly in both a netball shootout and a game of lacrosse. My honourable friend pointed to the importance to schools of recruiting qualified PE teachers such as Mark Draycott. Uh, and the department does continue to recruit well in terms of PE. Uh, in 2015-16, we recruited 1,235 new teacher trainers against a target of 1,227. Uh, my honourable friends, the member for Erewash and the members for Totnes, as well as Macclesfield, as well as the honourable member for Falkirk and other members, praised the Daily Mile initiative and how successful it has been in ensuring children are exercising every day. It is the brainchild of Elaine Wiley, and I'm looking forward to meeting her uh, in February. Now, my honourable friend, the member for Totnes, emphasised the importance of active travel and how we can encourage children to cycle uh, and to cycle uh, to school where it is safe to do so, something I agree with. Now, my honourable friend from Macclesfield pointed to the importance of being active in the workplace, and perhaps as MPs, uh, we should sit less and stand more. As MPs, of course, we, we run for office, we stand for election, and we take our seats. But of the three, obviously the most important is running for office. Uh, and he asked for a minister to meet UK active, uh, which I or my honourable friend, the member for crew, uh, would be delighted uh, to do. Now, a positive experience of sport at a young age can create a lifelong love of sport and physical participation. That's why we are focusing on primary-aged children as we want to help them to develop healthy habits and a love of sport at an early age in life. Something my honourable friend, the member for Arawash, emphasised, developing that habit. Secondary schools have specialist PE teachers already on staff and are able to access programmes such as uh, the Sportivate and the and satellite uh, clubs. Now, my honourable friend, uh, the member for Totnes, raised a concern about children from disadvantaged backgrounds. We want all pupils to be healthy and active, and we know that many schools are already using their sport premium funding to target those pupils who are traditionally the least active. And in many schools, this will include providing additional sport, uh, support to children who may not be able to attend after school clubs and activities. But we know there is more to do, which is why, of course, we're doubling the funding from September uh, 2017. We've also announced that £10 million a year of revenue from the soft drinks levy will fund the expansion of healthy breakfast clubs in up to 1,600 schools from September 2017 to 20. And this programme will ensure that more children benefit from a healthy start to their school day. And it's a, a fitting accompaniment to the uh, primary PE and sport premium. We're anxious to make sure that schools continue to use this funding wisely and have a number of accountability measures in place, something that was raised uh, during this debate. Schools are held accountable for how they spend their funding through Ofsted whole school inspections and a requirement to report their spending plans and the impact of that spending online. Furthermore, we have updated grant conditions and guidance and continue to work with our partners to disseminate best practice and examples of innovative, innovative uses of funding to schools, ensuring that they are uh, best placed uh, once the doubling of the premium comes into effect. Uh, so, David, uh, the government aims to significantly reduce England's rates of childhood obesity within the next 10 years, and I firmly believe that a cross-government approach is key to that success. In addition to the soft drinks industry levy, the last 12 months has seen two lang landmark strategies published, the government's sports strategy and the childhood obesity plan, and we continue to work closely with a range of other government departments to deliver these strategies. All 